Hey, this is Brent Annals of Smart Token Labs. And Mitch Pelman-Allen of Perion. We're bridging Web two, Web 3 and Web 2. And creating the future of gaming in Web 3. We're on the edge of NFT, the best game in town for Intel on the future of Web 3. Stay tuned. Hey, all you NFT curious listeners, check out today's episode and learn how today's guests are collaborating to change the NFT and gaming reward and loyalty landscape. Why Mars and Apes are such major inspirations for our guests and how the digital and physical world of NFTs is colliding faster than we ever thought possible. All this and more on today's episode. Enjoy. Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's guests are Brent Annels, CMO of Smart Token Labs, and Mitch Penman Allen, co founder at Perian. Smart Token Labs is creating a new standard for a tokenized future. They're building composable smart token bridges, bridges from tomorrow to today. And Perian's mission is to create and distribute opportunity by harnessing the untapped potential of the Web 3.0 gaming community and positioning them as the economic champions of tomorrow. Brent and Mitch, it's really great to have you. Welcome to Edge of NFT. Thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks. Welcome, welcome, fellas. Um, yeah, so many cool things happening here. And, uh, you know, like we like to do for our listeners, uh, maybe you haven't caught uh, up with what you're doing. We'd love to get some background from each of you on your projects and uh, and kind of what led you to where you're at now. So um, let's start, Brent, with you, man, and, uh, and get a little background. Uh, yeah, sure. My background is, um, I feel like the old guy in the room always these days. So I'm like the uh, web one, two and three guy. Um, so I did my first startup back in 2000, ad tech's first generation startup into Silicon Valley in 2000, rode around through the dot-com boom and bust. Um, then I ended up with uh, in wave two with uh, both Facebook and Uber, um, looking after brand at Facebook and partnerships at Uber. So I had the experience of, um, you know, the mobile app driven internet and, uh, and now I'm in Web3 with Smart Token Labs. And, um, you know, we're an open source software development company. We, um, you know, we have a vision that um, tokens are the building blocks of, of Web3. The tokenization of everything is going to change everything. It's a core sort of infrastructure layer to, to Web3. And as we said in the intro, we're, we're building bridges and trying to create pathways to mass adoption between web two and web three and create better user experience. My name is Mitch. Um, I first got into crypto in 2017, like a lot of people. Um, a friend of mine had met a guy called Willie Wu in uh, Bali, uh, Bali or Sri Lanka on a, on a kite surfing trip. Um, anyway, got connected um, and he had a small group of people just talking trading all day. So uh, I became really obsessed with the, the futures market. Um, and so I just started reading books all day long, um, mostly kind of like post-grad university literature around uh, financial markets, hedge fund strategies, things like that. Uh, by 2019, I was running my own futures trading company. Um, and then one day in, it was 2020, uh, we were in Melbourne uh, in the dog park. Um, we had some pretty strict lockdowns here through COVID and we couldn't do anything but go to the dog park. Um, so I met uh, one of the other Perry and co-founders there, Amos, um, and he was, he was relatively interested in crypto. He was a developer. And I thought, uh, this is great. We'll be able to jump off and, and sort of jump more into the stuff that I was doing in the futures markets. Uh, however, uh, sort of mid-2021, Amos became uh, number one in the world at Axie Infinity, which is, I, I guess, like the, the first touch point for a lot of people into NFT gaming. Mm. Um, he told me all about the leasing model, um, how that works. Uh, and I just like, I saw like, this is thing's going to be huge. Um, so we just dove in and um, we formed Perion. Um, and so like we started out with a pretty traditional model where we would just lease axes to two gamers. I think a, a lot of people came in that route. Um, we kind of zoomed out and we thought 
if you look at say Axie's performance, just as an example, that token launched at kind of like double digit million valuation and it ended up doing like 3000 X. Uh, so we thought that was a really interesting place for us in the ecosystem where we could a take an early position in games, uh, B, use our network of streamers because we're like a competitive esports organization and we have around 3 million eyeballs in front of our streamers now. So we could use our network of streamers to distribute content from these games that we're backing um, throughout the play to win ecosystem. And then we become a launch pad. Uh, we develop the initial esports scene and we get the initial eyeballs that a, that a game uh, needs to have to succeed. And then we just develop our name further in, in the space. So uh, that's how we're really positioning is sort of being this competitive esports content platform of uh, Web3 Gaming. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand for pretty much the remainder of the episode, Mitch, you're going to get out one of these dry textbooks and we're going to, we're just going to read through it together, <laughs> right? And just kind of try to process it. Uh, oh my God, it's so time. dry. I, I, I <laughs> going, going into gaming is so much fun. <laughs> because but, like, I think the thing that really attracts me about gaming is like, people don't need to learn anything to understand gaming, right? Like that's, I think that's, it's going to be such a big on-ramp to crypto is like most people don't understand how the Fed works or how DeFi works, but they understand games and they'll, they'll do anything to play a game. So we see gaming as like this mass onboarding um, to crypto. Yeah. So, so can you, uh, let's get to know a little bit more about each of your companies and, and kind of how you formed a partnership and, uh, and Mitch, you know, since we just kind of heard from you a little bit, can you, can I talk about the company a little bit more and, and about the partnership? Yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, as of right now, we are on the, on the public, um, on the front ends, we're very much positioning as, as, as an esports team of the, um, of the Web3 gaming space. Uh, we have around 1,200 games playing for us, um, which is, yeah, something, something that we're kind of more into is targeting competitive players um so just for example like last season of axie just finished uh we had uh three players in the top 10 um we took out second spot i think sixth spot and then equal seventh spot so like that that's like the, a huge part of what we're doing is creating this this team and this kind of um inspirational and aspirational environment where uh people want to be a, be a part of, of perion and that sort of led us into uh working with smart token labs as they were creating sort of experiential products for, for teams and, and guilds and organizations. So that was sort of the, the, the inroad to it. Uh, so like we saw SDL as a huge value add. I mean, creating merch and creating experience for our players is like we're trying to attract the best talent. And so on the front end, we have this, this great team and this really nice brand. And on the back end, we, we need to do things to keep our player base engaged and um, keep, them, keep them driving to perform. That's so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Build, building an esports team also of that size. I mean, I'm not as involved it just, just from being in NFTs, of course, like gaming is all over the place, but it's, it's a fascinating world and, and, and bringing that together sounds like a fascinating process. It's really fun. <laughs> Brent, how about you? Like, um, tell us a little bit about your, uh, the, the, the company, um, and, uh, and, and how, how you feel about this partnership and what excited you about it. Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, Smart Token Labs, we've been around for four years. We've been building these two core products, which are both open source products. One is um, Alpha Wallet, which is an open source mobile NFT wallet. Um, it's been forked over 500 times, loved by Ethereum developers. Um, that's a product in and of itself. And then Token Script, which is our framework for um, basically making tokens smart. Um, and predominantly, that's NFT. So um, what it allows us to do is add, add rich utility and function to NFTs, um, we create a smart token interface around an NFT or a token or an NFT, um, same thing. Um, it allows that, that NFT to connect to um, a smart contract, uh, to connect to other tokens, um, but really quite importantly, to connect to Web2 sites and services. And that's part of what I guess we're doing with, with the guys at Perion is um, we have a suite of um, smart contract-based products that are all fully open source that are available to our partners and um, the, the NFT rewards token that, that Mitch and the team have used for their gamers is one of those, you know, sort of templated rewards, um, smart contracts that we've got in our library. Um, but then we have this, um, this product called Token Negotiator, which basically um, web enables, uh, sorry, token enables web two sites or 
services. So in this case, what we're doing is we're putting token negotiator into a, into a merch site, which is called Deep Sea Merch. Um, Mitch and the team are doing a drop of the um, season's reward token to the top performing gamers. Those gamers have that token in their wallet. And when they visit the website, they're, they're directed to Deep Sea Merch. Um, depending on the token they hold, it will unlock different types of um, merch rewards based on their performance in the in the season. So it's a it's a it's an example for us of you know a, a really simple bridge. What it, what it what it creates is a seamless experience, a better user experience. It's a reward. It's a surprise and delight experience for high performing gamers. But it sort of takes them from the Web three world of Discord and drops into just visiting a web a mainstream Web two site and unlocking rewards based on what they hold. That sounds really cool, and uh, I know. I say this out loud because why not? We were talking about you guys are going to do a giveaway. We'll, we'll mention it later in the, in the episode. We talked about merch, and I could see why maybe giving away merch is exciting. Maybe we'll revisit that. We're still working out the details, but um, but but, but now that. that you mention how involved you are, maybe maybe it is a it is a good day. We just have our bad memories of having to ship like a you know <laughs> multi thousand dollar piece of art to Turkey for you know for for quite a bit of cash, but. <laughs> podcast right. logistics company <laughs> right <laughs> so guys we're talking we're talking rewards we're talking loyalty uh we're talking nfts right so when we think more broadly like what impact has nfts brought to the world of rewards and experiences for play to earn gamers and and more broadly how has it impacted loyalty like how has this interplay evolved in your eyes yeah, look, I think um, the biggest thing for us is we have a competitive player base, right? And we need to sort of drive them to, 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 to bring their best. Um, and so what we did with our NFT uh, partnership with STL is we created this season rewards token. And that's, and like, I remember I said, we have 1200 gamers. Um, the season rewards are only for the top 100 players. And so it's like, a, it's like an um, aspirational environment, right? Where you want to make that top 100. And so what we're really doing is like driving their engagement with, with the game through gameplay. And then they get to receive merch and, and cool things that they really want. Um, I mean, our players have been asking for merch for a while now. So it's really like rewarding them for, for putting in the effort. And I mean, that, that's, 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 um, that's a really good like value driver when it pertains to loyalty and things like that. It's like, if you, if you put in the work, you'll get, you'll get re represented. I th and I think sort of like in the broader context of, um, loyalty rewards um you know the broader marketing ecosystem i think we're just getting started you know um and it's 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 very exciting about what what's going to be possible to be enabled so um you know the mechanisms for for, for membership programs rewards programs you know creating surprise and delight experiences for um you know members of your community or your customer base have been around for a very long time um, you know, the, uh, I remember years ago, I worked in telco marketing and, um, you know, the poster child of, of, um, of the rewards and loyalty space always used to be O2 in London. Um, they just had these incredible mechanisms for, they, they had this thing called a pie and a pint. So, you know, you could go to the O2, O2 branded stadium and with your O2, all you had to do was show your phone at that point and show you, it had the little O2 bar on it and you got a free pie and a free pint at the, at the football match, which was pretty cool. Um, but I, I remember the best thing they ever did was they created this, um, this experience for customers who were leaving London and going to France. And I don't know if you've ever been stung by international roaming fees. Um, most of us probably have. And uh, you get this horrible bill shock experience when you've done a little overseas trip. And what O2 did is, as you were going um, into the tunnel to go under the, under the English Channel um, on the train, the last cell tower would see you as an O2 customer, ping, you would ping that tower and they would know that you're off to France. And when you pulled out the other side of the tunnel, they would ping you with a text message and say, here's a free roaming pack so that you don't get bill shock while you're, while you're having a holiday in France. You know, and I, th I think NFTs create these seamless um, mechanisms for, for recreating all of that. You know, on one hand, you have, you have all the utility-based stuff that can be done and we can drop NFTs to communities and these 
unique digital assets that they own can unlock all sorts of experiences. And I, I think we're just really getting started at the beginning of that. You know, how does that create a better experience than O2 could currently deliver? Um, but then in a more broader sense, you've got the sort of liquidity part of it. And, you know, we're talking to a couple of companies at the moment who have big, big membership points-based systems. And, you know, you can tokenize those points. You can create a secondary market for the membership points someone holds in the Qantas Frequent Flyer program. So if I'm not going to use those points, can I sell them or pass them on to someone else? And I think that stuff is also just, you know, massively exciting. And I just think we're getting, we're at the very beginning of, of where it's all going to go. I think it's really exciting so, too. And just like creating like free market economies for, for sort of everything. I think it's just like the, the financialization of the world. It's quite an interesting topic. But yeah, won't, won't derail too much, but yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, we're, we're really, it, we're not theorizing this necessarily anymore. It's actually yeah. being put into practice, right? Like Brent, you're saying you, you have a four-year-old company, you know, four years ago, things were a little different, right? As far as putting things into practice, we had a lot of vision, right? But actually being able to execute and see results, see the uptake, see the, the, the real traction, right? It's here now. And that's so exciting to see, like we're there and it's just the beginning, right? We're just at the tip of the iceberg. That's exactly right. And these bridges between, you know, and, and at the moment in real terms, you know, the, the, the NFT holders are relatively small in terms of the volume, the scale, the number of people that hold NFTs. It's, it's still relatively small. Um, but already, you know, the, the type of NFT, particularly just if you take PFP collections as an example, you know, if you, if you hold a board Ape or a CryptoPunk or, or, you know, World, world of um, Women, you know, it, it's, it's a very power, it says a whole series of things about you. You know, obviously there's the financial cap, cap if you've got a two or $300,000 ape in your, in your wallet, right, that says something about you. If you're heavily involved in the world of women community, that says something about you. You know, we're, we're doing something at the moment with, um, with a big resort chain out of, um, or global resort chain, and, and there's a big conference happening in New York. Um, not as cool as the one that's happening in LA shortly, but an NFT conference happening in New York. And, um, and the hotel chain is going to, um, basically they've got like a, ga it's a gaming resort. So you can gamble there and you can stay there and you can have a great time there. And they're going to plug in um, Token Negotiator into their website. And basically, if you hold an ape, you are a VIP while that conference is running. Now it's a bridge into Web3 for a Web2 hospitality and resort player and just by knowing that you've got this specific, you know, you don't have to do, go and do a deal with Board Ape Yacht Club to, to enable that. You can just recognize the token and you can say by virtue of the value of that token, that's a high value player or person that I, that I want in my facility. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make them a VIP for two weeks while they're in town. You know, those, those sorts of things are just almost limitless in terms of what, what might be possible. Yeah, that's a clever play. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I love this. Uh, I'm just thinking about like four or five years. I just love the term board ape. Of course, it's part of the whole you know, brand of it, right? Being like the VIP and the, 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 the player that you want involved. You think like five or six years ago, if we were talking about, oh yeah, board apes are going to be very special. In a few years, <laughs> it's gonna be a very special thing. You're like, what are you talking about board apes? I don't get it. <laughs> um, all right, uh, we've talked about it a little bit. Let's just cap it off and make sure there's nothing else that, that's really worth worth jumping on. And that is just kind of NFT serving as bridges into web two site services and experience. Anything more you guys want to add on that, um, you know, to highlight what's going on? Or, or should we move on to the next question? We, we did cover a lot of it. I I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it, it's interesting right now we have these like, digital, uh, digital tokens backed by physical goods. It's kind of like, it's no longer just a picture. Is actually uh, some redeemable aspect to it, which I think is really interesting. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just super excited for what we can do. I think like what we're doing now with STL is really just kind of a proof of concept for us. I think it's just the, the first step in, in of many. Yeah, I, I think the final point I'd make is that you know you know we see. I mean, we're, we're both Australian-based startups, um, and um, you know we see Mitch and the guys as, as innovators in the play-to-earn space. They're you know they're creating this. Um, you know, esports team, the the best players in the world. Um, you know, they're high value. They're a high value audience, a high value cohort, and 
we're really excited about this. You know, this is just a, a first toe in the water to to do a merch reward. But the sorts of things, just like some of the things we've just been talking about, you know, everybody everybody probably wants a slice of those gamers that, that Mitch has in his portfolio, right? So uh, <laughs> really interesting to work on <laughs> work with the moving forward. Yeah. Well, it is the gateway, right, to uh, to mass adoption, right? A lot of folks live in the Web two world, and I feel like a lot a lot of people within Web three, as inclusive as I think the community is, and as community oriented as the Web three world is, uh, sometimes people get beat up a little bit for for being primarily in Web two. I think we got to have some some really wide open doors and to build those bridges to really bring people uh, into the next um, phase of, of of evolution in the world of NFTs and blockchain. So, yeah, you know, hundred really percent. It's always the same old story, isn't it? The old guys it don't is. get it. You know, the guys from Web One didn't get it. The guys from Web Two and the girls from Web Two didn't get it. And you know, it's yeah. always that same thing. But you know, none of it's none of it's ever exclusively true. <laughs> you know, it's right. always somewhere in the middle. That's right, right. And so, when you guys look beyond uh, the the your companies and uh, the kind of the close partnerships here that we talked about today, where do you get inspiration within the world of of NFTs in this kind of next phase of of the development of the world of blockchain? What inspires you? I think it's pretty um, inspiring to see what Yuga Labs has done, um, raising four hundred fifty million dollars. <laughs> I think that was. Uh, it took us took us by surprise. It's really interesting to see like how they have created like made board apes the the thing to have um, just through like understanding what their community needed and, and what was going to get them sort of leapfrogging things like uh, CryptoPunks and just like the, the the moves they made. I think was just a really impressive, right? And we're kind of seeing like crypto was never this like super popular, um, you know, in the mass market adoption phase. It was never this like huge public facing thing, but through NFTs, like, you, you know, you have basketball players owning NFTs, you have like celebrities buying up NFTs, Dave Chappelle, Eminem, Snoop Dogg. Like it, it's just like the, the way that they've been able to bridge into the traditional world is really impressive. And I think that's just exactly uh, where we see the space going. And like, we're trying to be that for gaming. <laughs> we think that like the, obviously if you look at the NFT games now, they're, they're still pretty early state. Um, we are seeing some pretty amazing sort of like AAA talent coming through, looking to, to bridge into this space. And so we're trying to just be ready um, for, for when like the games are mass market consumer ready. So we can be there waiting and um, ready to, to be that bridge. Wanted to see any other, you know, companies that stand out to you, man, that, that uh, inspire you or projects? Yeah, I think so much of it. Um, I mean, I just it, it's just super impressive to see um, at a at a brand level. It's just super impressive to see what Yuga Labs has done with or with with yeah. those with those brand properties and the, the communities that exist around those three three core brand properties and and the way they've executed. You know, it's it's just like even for, even the mutant ape you know drop off the back of board ape you know could have could have gone horribly wrong, um, and I sort of like the vision around the other side is just, it's just really cool, right? It's just, it's super on brand, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's full and open IP rights and the, the members of the community are the creators and the owners and they can do whatever they want. Um, and they are doing these amazing things. And yet you've got, you've nevertheless, you've got like this brand custodian sitting behind it in Yuga Labs painting a vision of where they're going to go, doing the ape coin, pointing to the metaverse, and it's believable. You know, and I, th- I just think that's, it's, it's. I get a little bit tingly when I talk about it, you know, because it's, it's just so hard to do, you know, it's so hard to do. So I just think, and, and there's just a thread that's the same thread that pulls through everything in, in marketing and brand in history. You have passionate believers in the core brand property and what it stands for and having an ape is, you know, whether you like apes or not, but it, it says something about you, um, you know, and and so I just think that's that's an amazing brand platform that's just got a great business strategy that seems to be executing incredibly well. I think the, um, the, the other stuff is... Um, I don't know, it's probably just like completely on the other side, you know, and I, I think it's around inclusivity and and governance and enablement and, um, you know, all these projects out there to trying to change the world, whether it's, 
you know, climber or, you know, some, I mean, I know it's verging into DeFi, but, but I just think what, what, what people are doing to um, organise and mobilise communities of people around sort of bigger cause-related stuff and, um, you know, World of Women seems, seems to be that in a completely different way, but it's, it's you know, celebrating female entrepreneurship and, and the power of being a woman and, 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 and them, you know, coming together to, to do things that, you know, change the world. And I just, I just think, oh, that's really, you know, I think about my kids, you know, my kids are 1, 13 and 10 and they're growing up in this world and it's all changing around us. And it's, I'm, I just really, I guess I'm really positive about it. You know, I'm really optimistic and hopeful that um, really good stuff's going to come on both ends of the spectrum. That's that. That sounds great. Yeah. So are we, that's a fact. So, uh, really cool stuff. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Of course. No lack of enthusiasm. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I, was, I hesitate to share this because it sounds funny, but I'm going to share. I remember having a conversation with my father one day, like several years ago, you know, and, 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 if there was something going on with the government or something he was upset about, he's like, man, things are going down the tubes, you know, I think everything, things are just, everything's going down the tubes, you know? And, uh, and I remember, well, there's some things that are going up the tubes, I think, you know, but there's a, there, there's a lot moving in the positive direction and it's good to focus on it too. Totally um, and speaking of a positive direction is, um, What's on the on the next uh, bit of the roadmap for each of you guys? Maybe we'll start with uh, Mitch. Yeah, sure. Um, we are just going through like a process of scaling the team. Um, so we've been just interviewing like crazy, um, looking for a CMO, uh, a Web3 dev, quant trader, a couple of things just to give us a bit of an edge in what we're up to. Uh, we're looking at building out models for game economies, uh, working on the smart contracts for the DAO, uh, speaking to a lot of new games, um, as, I, as I mentioned before, there's some super exciting talent coming through and we are just trying to help out in that launchpad capacity. Uh, so that, that's, been, that's a huge part of our roadmap. And then we're working on a couple of little interesting NFT projects um, in the background. A little bit of a black box, won't, won't come completely public with what we're up to there, but um, yeah, got some interesting stuff happening. You're always allowed to list the things that you don't want to talk about here. That's kind <laughs> of a nice little hack for not sharing it. Yeah, perfect. Can't, can't, can't leak too much alpha. <laughs> what about you, Brent? Uh, what's next on the roadmap? Um, I guess we just built, you know, build, build, build. So we're 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 building frantically around um, around token script, and um, as you know, as we build, um, we're you know, our roadmap is very is very focused at the moment. Um, token script is a framework, you know, building blocks of Web three has a, has a lot of components to it, but we're super focused in the NFT community space at the moment we're working with some some you know ground up projects like nifty taylor with board up your club who, who do fashion for fashion for so a bunch of a bunch of collection based projects bringing utility um equipping them with smart contracts to do things like derivatives etc so basically providing an engine to nft collections where a, a lot of them don't necessarily come with the techs um they're not tech heavy they're they're sort of more you know business art commerce community heavy so we're sort of like enabling and empowering them and then working on a on top down a, a series of sort of like higher end um you know web 2 brand partnerships from service providers and loyalty and membership programs and um and then big brands that want to want to connect between between these uh, these two worlds so they're, they're the main things for us we're doing a public token release for um, token script later on this year um yeah that's that's the main things we've got going on Sounds like a lot of good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, guys, there's a ton of stuff across the board, I think, uh, that we should be excited about. Uh, your partnership, what you guys are working on individually, uh, I think the state of the industry, so many cool things happening. I appreciate you sharing some of that with us here uh, during this first segment. We interrupt the Edge of NFT podcast to reveal one of the best kept secrets in the NFT space right now, the Koi Network. If you are a creator or a builder or an investor in groundbreaking projects, you need to dive into Koi ASAP. Why? Imagine a new internet where each time your posts get viewed on TikTok, Instagram, or Twitter, you earn rewards. Koi's revolutionary decentralized infrastructure scales this new internet to the whole globe, transforming attention into an asset and every creator into an earner, all without the expense of high energy usage of old school blockchains. Here is the best way to learn more and earn more by becoming a founding member of the growing Koi community. Go to edgeofnft.com slash koi. 
That's edgeofnft.com slash K-O-I-I, two I's. There you can publish your first Koi NFTs for free and start earning Koi today. The new internet is coming. Don't you want to be valued on it? What we wanted to do is take a moment and shift gears a little bit and move to our second segment, which is called Edge Quick Hitters. It's basically a fun, quick way for us to get to know you a little bit better. There's 10 questions, and we're looking for short, single word or, or few word responses, but we may dive in if we find uh, the urge. You guys ready to jump in on this? So let's do it. All right, let's do it. Okay, so we'll start with question number one. Brent, what is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Mars bar. Mars bar, nice. Yes. And this is the same. It, it was in uh, in Australia or where was, where was it? Was it was in Australia. Yeah, I don't in think Australia. you have Mars bars in the US. They're, they're kind of like a, I don't know what the equivalent is, but anyway. The, did you have Mars? Mars? Like a we Snickers or, yeah, Mars. okay. So it's, yeah, it's a, yeah. yeah. Is it the same? Okay, it's the same. Cool. Appreciate it. Mitch, how about you? I bought an album. You happen it's to remember it. what it was? I think it was NERD. It was like that first album. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah, a solid nice. first. Nice little flex. Uh, cool. Question. <laughs> question two, Brent. What is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? Uh, Garana. It's the uh-huh. uh, South American uh, sort of stimulant drink that's in everything these days. That's oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 And you, you like sold it as like a business that you had or you were just. Yeah, yeah. I set up a company called Exciting Alternatives and we were the first um, wholesale provider of Garana into Tasmania. Wow. That's cool. Present. I like that company name. Mitch, beat that. <laughs> uh, I think it was like arbitraging necklaces and runescape. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. I love it. Question no. three, Brent. What is the most recent thing you purchased? Mars bar. <laughs> <laughs> My man, stay consistent. <laughs> Mitch, pretty good shape for all those Mars bars. Yeah. <laughs> um, I bought my girlfriend some mentioned? sunglasses. I bought my girlfriend some sunglasses yesterday because she was uh, not happy I was heading to the US for the conference. Ah, okay. <laughs> nice. She couldn't get a visa nice. in time. Like, yeah. Oh damn! Gotta yeah. be proactive. Um, question four, Brent. What is the most recent thing you sold? Ouch. Uh, yeah, uh, where did you sell it? Did you have like an online listing service you used, or, or how did you how did you sell uh, your couch? My my wife is an absolute gun on the second hand market, so um, mm-hmm. I was given the responsibility of buying a new couch for our apartment, and um, she sold the couch that I bought. It wasn't good. All right, <laughs> there it is. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, how about you? Uh, I sold a Nike jacket actually. I think I sold it on eBay. Oh, cool! Right on. Yeah, yeah. Question number five. What is your most prized possession, Brent? Just a just a shitty old blue t-shirt I've got. I just love. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Mitch, how about you? I, probably like old photos from when I was a kid. I tend to like those. Yeah. I'd say photos. Photos, old photos. Okay. Right on. Yeah. Question number six. If you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service, and experience that's currently for sale. What would that be? What do you got your eye on, Brent? Mm. There's a really nice apartment in Manly that um, looks out over the beach. I would, um, it's a little out of my, it's a little beyond me, but I'd really like to buy that. All right. All right. Nice. I mean, give it some probably, time, right? Mitch, how about you? Probably, probably uh, should have bought a board aid <laughs> uh, back, <laughs> yeah. back a, few, a few months ago. But uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That'd be it. (laughs) That's the one. I got you. Okay. Question number seven, Brent, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would it be? Uh, Letting go. I think I've got, as I've got older, I've got very good at at sort of letting go, you know, and just, just not sweating the small stuff, not, not getting too, too caught up in things. Right on. Yeah. Very, very kind of philosophical perspective for sure. Mitch, how about you? Um, I think like just a willingness to dive into the things that you're passionate about and not kind of hold back and, and feel like you <laughs> you shouldn't do these things or sort of second guessing yourself. I think that's super important. Mm-hmm. And um, I hope people continue doing that. Right on, right on. Question eight, flip side, guys. If you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would it be? Brent? Impulse control around Mars bars. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <the> theme here. <laughs> Love it. 
<laughs> How about you, Mitch? Uh, mm, probably the aspiration to all the influences. <laughs> Maybe we'll get through that. There you go. There it is. <laughs> yeah, I could stand that. I could get rid of that for sure. <laughs> all right, a little easier, guys. Okay, question number nine, Brent. What did you do just before joining us on the podcast? It's early, so I was just I was just waking up. I um I gave my one year old a hug and um and played with him for fifteen minutes. Solid. Great way to great way to start the day. Mitch, how yeah, about you? I, um, I took my dog Sophie for a run around the park. <laughs> uh, woke her up. She wasn't very impressed, and then yeah, took her for a run. <laughs> nice. Fun. Fun way to start the day. Quality time, guys. Good job. That's Quality it. time. For sure, yeah. guys. For sure. <laughs> Question number ten. Last one. Brent, what are you going to do next after the podcast? Uh, that sounds a bit lame, but I'm going to go on to another meeting. <laughs> Keep it Let's going. Keep it rolling. <laughs> Working hard. Working hard. Um, <laughs> I will pack my bags to come to the U.S. All right, man. Looking forward to seeing yeah. you soon, man. Big Fiesta yeah, and FTLA. <laughs> yeah, beautiful, you guys beautiful guys. Say again? You guys going? I- I might oh, yeah. check it out. I'm trying to get a ticket. I... Yeah, cool. It's cool. hard. Hopefully, hopefully catch you guys there if you can make it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeedy, indeedy. Um, so that's Quick Hitters, guys. Really appreciate it. Uh, fun times. With almost $25 billion in sales in 2021, there's no denying the NFT market is on fire. But what many investors don't realize is demand has skyrocketed for another asset, thanks in part to this NFT boom. The asset I'm talking about is multi-million dollar blue chip art. And it's been so hot, a Banksy offering on the Masterworks platform recently sold for $7.4 million. And what's even more incredible is, all shares of this Banksy offering sold out in just three hours. According to Masterworks, similar works by Banksy saw a price appreciation of 19.9% from 2007 to 2020 outpacing the S&P 500 by nearly a factor of two over the same time period. And Masterworks investors recently saw a 32% annualized appreciation net of fees from the sale of another Banksy painting called Mona Lisa. To discover how to buy into similar offerings by Banksy, Picasso, and Monet for a fraction of the cost of the entire painting, visit edgeofnft.com masterworks. That's edgeofnft.com masterworks. For important disclosures, visit masterworks.io slash disclaimer. We want to do a one last segment, if, you, if you'd like. It's called Hot Topics. And uh, Ethan, we got a couple of good ones, I think, for today, yeah? Yeah, let's hit that. So Jacob and Company launches an NFT collection of digital and physical watches inspired by the metaverse. Um, and this uh, physical watch collection takes full advantage of the metaverse. It's uh, called Astronomia Metaverso. And it was curated in partnership with UNXD, an NFT marketplace for a luxury and culture. Appropriately, the collection builds upon Jacob and Company's storied Astronomia line with its myriad depictions of the universe while extending it into a digital crypto native future. Uh, the first thing I think of when I think of this, by the way, is just uh, there was a guy. Um, like he's, I think he saw my hat, the edge of NFT. These things are fun to start spark conversations. I already started a few here since I've yeah. been in LA, but he, he like showed me his watch, I think. And he was like, Hey, what do you think? That's, I got the NFT, you know? And he was really excited about it. You know, um, I, is anybody, are any of you guys watch guys? Like, I think it's like a personality. People love watches. Oh, like, I know, like I've got a watch. It's like a, a nice watch, but I wouldn't say I'm like a collector or anything yeah. like that. Um, yeah. This looks interesting, but I'm like, what? what is the actual connection to the metaverse besides just like in name? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I should read more about this. Yeah. I'm assuming you get, you get, you know, oh, they it's have becoming, an NFT. Well, yeah. And also, it, you know, a, a, it's like digital fashion, um, right? right? Which people are getting really excited about. You know, we we had Jadu jetpacks on, which I wouldn't necessarily consider fashion, but an accessory for your avatar, right? So you can take that little jetpack and pop it on your your me bits <laughs> and fly around in AR and stuff like that. So yeah, um, cool. And actually, was I literally again conversation started from his hat last night? Somebody is telling me um, just about like digital clothing that they were purchasing, and you know, she's like, yeah, it's pretty. You know, you can get like a 
digital metaverse t-shirt for $125. And I'm like, okay, interesting, right? Like you pay more for the digital item than the physical, you know, t-shirt. Yeah. But I think it like makes sense. So we think about this a lot. Like some people there are like online persona or online avatar is actually more important to them. Like how they look in the physical world. So I think like creating that is, is super interesting. I think what's, what's interesting now is like, we're seeing like in NFT games, it's all about like free market economies. Whereas if you look at say, um, like a fortnight, like I think they did like a Balenciaga crossover release, but the price was just fixed. It was like $12 or something like that um, in, in real world currency, 12 or 20 or something, something around there. Um, it's really interesting to see like now in NFT games, they could probably take that a step further where like you would actually have to perform an action in game to, to receive this, this NFT or this, this piece of clothing. And then you can kind of create this whole marketplace around it where like instead of the, the developer like having this one-way funnel of, of money where they're just like saying you pay us and here's the fixed price. It's like you can actually create a free market economy and like what's the value of this Veblum good within like within the digital landscape. Super interesting. I think that's like a, that's a concept where we're going to see people like valuing digital objects like at higher and higher um, prices. Yeah, we had an engine on, on the show and that, that was interesting to hear about the engine ecosystem and how they have this kind of token that can go into creating items in multiple game systems and you can kind of melt the item down if you want and it kind of goes back to the engine token and you can do things with it from there. Um, very interesting stuff in integrating with yeah. gaming. There's no question there. It's just, it's, it is the fusion of the real world and the, and the digital world and, you know, what, what we wear, what we own, what we what we hold on our wrist expresses who we are and um you know i've i watch my kids play roblox you know and i try and play with them but um you know they're dressing up in all sorts of stuff and they're using roblox dollars to do it and um it's just sort of like seamless and you know when they set me up they they put me in some very unflattering clothes and gave me a really dodgy name and um you, go, Dad. <laughs> you know and it's not what you want right you, you're just not like the cool guy in the in the in the ecosystem so. <laughs> that's pretty funny yeah. gosh all right well yeah we could talk we, we, we could talk a lot on that topic it's very fascinating but should we move on to the next one jeff did you have anything yeah i think we'll have that? a little bit nah i just okay. love, I, love, I love the intersection of digital and physical yeah hey, so hey, can i just do things. one can i just do one shout out to our partners nifty taylor they, yeah they're all in on um they're they're the digital fashion um aficionados so nifty, nifty taylor check them out they um They've been doing outfit digital outfits for um, Board Eight Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club, and about 30, 30 collections. Um, we're doing a derivative drop with them at the moment, but uh, they have, they're they're really at the cutting edge of uh, digital fashion for AFPs. Cool. Looks cool. Well, on that topic, cool. uh, we'll hit the next hot topic: Board Ape Yacht Club creator raising four hundred fifty million to build an NFT metaverse. Come up a couple times here. Yuga Labs, the owner of. The three of the biggest NFT brands on the market raised the four or fifty million in funding for a four billion dollar valuation. The company announced today. Fascinating how quickly this all happened. Um, the team behind Board Ape Yacht Club plans to use the money to build a media empire around NFTs, starting with games and its own metaverse project. So clearly, we're all inspired by this, right? That's something you guys both mentioned being inspired by. Um, yeah. But yeah. And what do you think? Did you get on this investment? <laughs> it did not. Like we, yeah, we didn't get the, the tip off about that. Um, but I, I think like it, it's super interesting, right? Because I, I feel like board apes are perfectly positioned to kind of create the, the counterculture metaverse, if that makes sense. Like, whereas like meta is like your web two guys coming across and trying to take advantage of this new thing. I think like board, ape, uh, board apes are like the perfect counterculture uh, version of the metaverse. And so like you, you'll probably see like a vote, right? It's like, do we go this way? Do we go to kind of maybe the walled garden that Meta might make? Or do we go to this like completely open um, Web3 native platform and, and see what that, see, see how that goes. I think like the, the team at Board Ape or, or at Yuga Labs have just like shown their willingness to like just keep pushing the boundaries and keep understanding the culture. Like they've just like without a deeper understand, like a deep understanding of this space, they, they wouldn't have been able to do what they could do. So I think like they're really well positioned to to kind of create that that um that metaverse experience. Yeah, it says a team describes this metaverse project called the other side, which is interesting, right? Exactly. As an MMORPG <laughs> meant to connect the broader NFT universe. 
They hope to create an interoperable world that is gamified and completely decentralized as Wiley Arenell, co-founder of Board API Club, who goes by the pseudonym Gordon Goner. Uh, we think the real ready player one experience will be player run. Yeah, that's right in line with what makes, you're saying. Makes total sense. Yeah, it makes total sense. I actually bought a VR headset recently because I needed to test out the metaverse. Super fun. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for VR. It's quite an interesting um, experience. Yeah, so look, I sort of mentioned it before. For just just from a brand perspective, I just think I just think they keep nailing it. You know, I just I mean, other side meta, other side meta, <laughs> you know? and um, and yeah, we've just aped in ourselves. So at Smart Token Labs, we've just uh, just acquired um, Mutant Ape nineteen seven four eight, and. Um, we're very excited. We just want to be involved. We want to be part of the community. You know, we want to be we want to be inside inside. You know, in the middle, um, being part of the experience. We want to play around with our tech. You know, we want to make him a super smart mutant. We want to use all the tech at our disposal to connect him to brands and experiences, and you know, just just be part of what's happening. So, as I said before, I'm just super inspired by it all. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, um, there are very few uh, visions that that land so well and are executed. Uh, so well. And uh, I feel like Bored Apes is just one of those special ones. You know, we talk about uh, people, you know, being um, unicorns, right? And I think that term's overused a lot these days, right? With the, the billion dollar valuation club and all those things, right? But, but, but this project really is. I mean, they really are. I mean, they just acquired CryptoPunks and MeBits too, right? Like, I, I mean, this is amazing, right? This is truly amazing what they're doing. And to be able to continue to execute against it is awesome. I would really love to know, like, looking back historically also, like the story of how that evolved, you know, what was the original vision? What were they really thinking? You know, like, this is our roadmap, right? I think we could probably pull a lot of this information out. I'm sure it's evolved tremendously since then, but like, do they ever envision that it could be like this? Like really, truly? I mean, this is something else. It's out of this world. I, don't, I, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, they're creating culture. And I think when you create culture, right, you, you can't set out to create culture. You know, you can't yeah. create, you know what, a brief for yourself, I'm going to create some culture. You know, I think that's <laughs> the mistake most people are making. So it kind of happens. You know, I don't think anybody knew when they did the drop that, you know, that, that an ape was going to be worth a million dollars. And, um, but what they've done is they just they've harnessed the momentum of that and, and just from the you know the way they did the royalties and the rights around it, they've just stayed true to some things which have just built this, you know, in immensely passionate community around it. We keep talking about community as moat in, in Web3. And I think it's frankly overused, but this is the classic example where it's it's just all bang on, you know. And what what they I think what they're doing incredibly well is they're not um, I sure I don't swear. They're not messing it up, you know. <laughs> They've got something very yeah. precious, like in advertising. It's like when you have an when you have like a, a a really amazing idea in advertising, like for a campaign or a brand. You know, it's like this. They're very precious things. They're fragile. You know, I think what they've got with that brand is it's a very precious thing. It's fragile, and and what's remarkable is, you know, they're just continuing to build on it, and they're not, you know, effing it up. Yeah. Right. That's the big thing. And, um, you know, a long way to go still, but, but the future looks bright for them. And uh, we're actually going to be um, having, nobody really knows, and this is going to actually air after uh, NFTLA. Uh, and we haven't announced anything that's happening on the main stage, really, uh, other than the speakers. But in between every talk, uh, there will be uh, some really well-produced uh, spotlight um, videos from some of our sponsors and amazing projects that we're, uh, that we're partnering with on the conference. And then also we have tons of like really cool entertainment. And one of the things is um, an artist who's going to come up, he's going to do a live painting in about seven minutes. And it's going to be of one of the, the board apes, of course. And so right there, all kinds of cool integrations. We got the permission from the owner and we'll be auctioning that off uh, for all kinds of like cool charitable um, givebacks and uh, turn it into a one of one NFT. There's so much cool stuff happening with it. But, you know, that that kind of thing just makes sense when you think about what board apes represents what it, what it, what it's become what it's going to do in the future and um there's not a lot of projects i think that you can say that about where people will get excited about like seeing somebody like like which nft 
would universally people be interested in seeing somebody actually paint live on stage? Uh, Board Apes is probably one of them. There's not a ton of others that everyone's universally like, oh, I know what that is, you know? So yeah. cool stuff. That should be fun. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Um, so Ethan, well, I think, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. I just, I just say it's, it's like the brand is like an open innovation platform. You know, it's, it's just, it's yes. hustle yes. technique. It's just like yeah. any, any, you know, the way they've set it up, like any of the, any of the apes can do anything and they can just, it's just the possibilities just are endless. You know, it's like the brand is an open platform. I don't think you've really seen many examples of that. It's sort of like, I remember like when, when Uber, you know, became part of culture, you know, and you were going to Uber it and it was in TV shows and, and movies and it was just part of the vernacular. But, you know, mm-hmm. you saw where that went. I mean, to some degree where that where that went as a brand, but it's the complete opposite, you know, a corporate owned brand that becomes part of culture and then this open brand platform that, wow, could go anywhere. Who knows what tomorrow holds for Bored Apes? Uh, well, well, guys, we, we, we like to take this moment to, um, to also bring in the some background of, of our community some of the folks that uh that we collaborate with and uh, and you know forming our own little little culture as well within the edge of nft universe and uh and ethan i think we have some folks who want to give a shout out to today yeah sure yeah i mean i think today i would like to uh just highlight a few newcomers and uh to the community that are showing up so we've been hosting this trivia night on tuesday nights uh at 6 p.m pacific time in the discord and uh, it's morphed into kind of me hosting something where we did sort of general trivia to playing some games together and getting to know each other and like tell tell each other what we're doing. Um, so I'll, I'll just highlight a couple of names of people that showed up and, and not only showed up, they like came and they participated and they chatted and stuff. So Adar was there. He actually, after he joined the session, he went and got himself a VIP voucher to attend NFTLA. He was so excited about engaging. Uh, we have Esus, J-E-A-S-U-S-J. Um, we were talking about helium mining actually at uh, Tuesday's session and, uh, and, and our friend at Almaden uh, also uh, helped host that conversation. And Isis was already like really amped about helium mining. So he's sh- sharing with the community all kinds of stuff that he knows about that and how to find out more. We had Johnny White, who's an artist, who's been living as an artist for many years and doing uh, you know, production stuff on television and, and movies. And, uh, and Socks Unlocks, S-O-X-U-N-L-O-C-K-S. So just, just a shout out to those folks for showing up and, uh, and jumping right in and being friendly and part of the community. So that's my shout out for today. It's nice. The community is growing and the culture is forming. So yeah. we'll see where it goes. Um, all right, guys. Well, look, I think that's a wrap on the core content for our episode today. We wanted to take a minute and uh, give you a chance to let folks know where they can follow you to get updates on your projects and on yourselves as well. Uh, yeah, sure. So you can find us at smarttokenlabs.com. Um, you can find us on Twitter at, at tokenscript, um, which is one word, tokenscript. It's probably the best place to find us. Yeah. Um, for Perion, you can find us at perion.gg, P-E-R-I-O-N.gg, of course. Um, and on Twitter at Perion Dao, uh, Perion D-A-O. Um, I'm also on Twitter, Mitch underscore uh, Perion. So you can Feel free to send me a message if you're interested in what we're up to. There we go. Amazing awesome stuff. stuff. Cool. And uh, we're on the street is we got a little giveaway that we cooked up for uh, for our listeners. And uh, we have some background on what that is. Um, I can, yeah, I can, I can yeah. yeah, I can hand I can handle this. We, we talked about it beforehand, and as alluded to previously, there's still some things we want to work out, but there will be a giveaway, and we'll post about that on our socials. Um, like I said before, Brent was talking about some merch and we were like, I don't know, maybe yes, maybe no. So maybe we'll do that if, if, if we talk through it and it sounds like a good idea, uh, potentially some tokens. It's all up in the air right now. So no promises, but some cool stuff is brewing. We'll make something happen. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So definitely keep your eye out on our socials. We get all the deets out to you. Uh, it'll be something fun. All right. Well, guys, I think we've reached the outer limit at the edge of NFTs for today. So thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventures on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to iTunes or Spotify right now, rate us, say something awesome, and then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. And lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great NFT content. Thanks again for sharing this time with us today. Thanks, guys.
This episode was brought to you by today's guest and sponsor. The creators of Edge of NFT will be compensated to support the production costs associated with the program. We are very selective when deciding who to have on these shows, but we are learning as we go just like you. The views expressed are for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only, and are not intended to serve as an endorsement or investment advice. You are urged to do your own research as well as consult a reputable financial advisor before making any investment or purchase decision.